In this video we want to look at the basic functionality of the material editor in 3D Studio Max and I just work with my basic test room scene of Digitalis and Warten and I also like always use my uh, presets, a standard, a standard mental way render presets which I can download from internet page of Digitalis and Werfen and just uh, uh, load them into my presets. You can open the material editor if you just use this uh, button in your main menu bar, material editor, or you also can just uh, press uh, the key M. If this doesn't work like right now, just be aware of that you switched up your override keyboard shortcut toggle and this is important for all the other shortcuts uh, you use. Uh, just switch this off and adjust, uh, if I just now press my shortcut M, you can see that the material editor is opened and uh, in my videos I always work with the old compact material editor which I think is better uh, and easier to use if you only have uh, very few materials and very few materials also means like 20 or even 30 materials because you can just uh, see this uh, in your material editor in these terms quite well. Okay, here we can already see a lot of materials and you can change between the amount of materials you want to see in your sample slot. Uh, here I have six materials and then I have five by three materials and uh, next step I have six by four means 24 materials and uh, the amount of materials you see in your material editor is not related to the amount of materials you have in your scene. You can have hundreds of materials in your scene but you only have a very few amount of uh, materials uh, in your uh, material editor uh, to have a better overview. You can see all these little um, uh, this little spheres and all these spheres are small render scenes. If I just uh, click, uh, double click on this scene you can just see that I can make this slightly bigger and it takes render time so be aware of that also this uh, takes a little bit of time so don't have always a window like this open because this will definitely uh, uh, bother you after a while because it always uh, it's always uh, calculating. Uh, you can change this view. For example, if I go into my background, I can change uh, a transparent uh, to a transparent background, which is really handy. So you can see the reflections uh, even better, and you can really estimate the material. You can also change to different kind of lights. For example, I only have one background light, or I just go into uh, two background lights. This is something you can set. And you can see in this little with this little icon if this material is already in your scene. For example, these materials have these little triangles in the corners, and all these triangles in the corner means that they are a part of the scenes. And all the materials, uh, all these little icons which don't have the triangles in the corners, are so far not a part of your 3D scene. You can choose materials from your scene and put them into your slate material editor and this is something you do with this um, pipette. And I just choose it and uh, I just uh, click on my room and then you can see that uh, the material of my room is now in my slate material. It was already there so uh, you can see that before uh, this material had this uh, uh, triangles in the corners and now I just chose it with a pipette and uh, uh, now this one has it in the corners and so this one is not uh, connected to my um, to my scene anymore. It's uh, moved from this position to uh, to this position in my slate material editor. Just choose another material for example like this one. I go to my old position and uh, choose with my pipette uh, uh, this kind of material and now the big question is if the material of my room is gone. It's not gone. All the materials in my scene are stored in the scene so even if they are not a part of my slate material editor any, uh, more anymore I just take the pipette, choose whatever kind of uh, position I want to have and I just uh, take my pipette and I can just take this material again into my material editor so I can have hundreds of materials uh, but I can only have a certain uh, amount of materials in my slate material editor so be aware of if you're working in a material and it's still not in the scene just put it somewhere in the scene otherwise you override it if you just take this position and take another material. 
What you can also do is I can just choose a material and you want to see which kind of objects have this material already in your scene. There is this really handy tool. You go into uh, select by material, this little button. And uh, here my uh, browser just opens and you can just see which kind of materials have these, uh, which, which kind of 3D objects have my material. And with again with this object I go into my select by material and uh, here we go, you can just see that my floor has, uh, has the material and you can just select it and uh, here we go, you uh, have uh, selected uh, the floor and uh, the floor has this kind of material that is also a really good way of selecting objects and finding the related uh, material from this object. You can drag and drop materials uh, in your, um, your scene and probably take this one and drag it to uh, this kind of position. If I now want to apply this material to my scene and applying to a scene means I can have two ways. I can just drag and drop it on the object or I can just use these uh, assign material to selection. You can see that it is not possible to have a material, uh, have two different materials with the same name. So what you have to do is you have to give, uh, you always take a name which uh, belongs to uh, uh, to your uh, to your 3D object, for example, like this one is n has now uh, the name room, and I call this like uh, room alternative. And uh, if I just uh, now drag uh, drag and drop this on my object, uh, then you can see that it works properly. I can also just take uh, this material, and you just see that it just changed uh, my room. So a drag and drop is possible, and you can also just go into uh, this assign material to selection and uh, here we go it just works in both uh, in both uh, direction uh, really well. In your material editor you have two different uh, ways of how to get materials into your sample slot and also how to get materials uh, uh, in your objects onto your objects. There's this button uh, get material in your uh, material editor and if I just uh, click on this, uh, the material in Map Browser opens and the first thing, just because we work with uh, Mendelway in all these videos, with Mendelway and Mendelway materials, I hardly use my standard materials. I always use my uh, Mendelway materials, which is uh, really important. So I can just choose um, any uh, Mendelway materials. We look at this a little bit later. I just double click on it and uh, here we go. I just have my uh, Mendelway materials in my, um, in my sample slot and uh, nothing happened to the position of uh, these objects. If I go again and choose uh, this material uh, which was the material on the sample slot, it didn't change it. If you want to uh, change the materials already to all the materials to all the objects, you don't go into get material, you just go on to this white button. In this terms it's an Autodesk wallpin material, you just click on this and you, you have to see you open the same window like this uh, material map browser. And if I now go into uh, and double click onto my new material um, like, like Autodesk glazing then you can see that it immediately exchanged the materials uh, uh, on the object so uh, first way is get material and you just have a new material in your sample slot nothing happened to the object also uh, even if this material is not there in my sample slot anymore it's still in my scene if you go in uh, this way you can just uh, exchange the material already uh, on, uh, on the objects. You probably saw that I quickly uh, clicked on the show shared material in viewport, which is uh, important because with this button you can see the textures and the mappings in my viewport. It just have to be switched on. Here you can already see that, uh, that this is uh, a wooden material. And as an example, this is what my visualization uh, looks like uh, right now. Okay, let's uh, look again at get material and uh, this way is more or less just the same, but just that you already exchanged the material on the objects. If I go into get material, you can open your material and map browser. And if I close all my menus, which I do right now, 
you can see that there are different parts. First, there are my materials. Secondly, uh, there are mappings. And uh, mappings, by the way, you can also load in your sample slots. And mappings uh, is something you can't apply to 3D objects. You can only apply mappings to materials. And the materials you can apply to 3D objects because the mappings don't have any information about uh, glossiness, about refractions and all the things. The only thing what mappings have uh, the size of the mapping is probably bitmap mapping or probably something uh, which is like a generic mapping. So um, you can also work with uh, mappings and uh, adjust them in your slate material editor. There is the Autodesk material library. There are the scene materials. So here are all the materials which are actually in your scene. And there's also something you can or should be aware of. This is this little red uh, uh, symbol. And this just means that, uh, for example, this is my um, my 3D object, uh, uh, which I'll just exchange. If I just do a double click, you can see that the corners are gone and it's just positioned here. And here's this little field like show shared in material in viewport. If I switch this off, you can see what hap what's happening with this uh, wet, um, wet corner. It's, it's just gone and you can just see that you can switch on and off the material in my viewport. And all the materials which have this uh, wet part are shown in um, uh, in your uh, in your viewport. Okay, so these are the scene materials and on top you have your sample slot and you can choose all the materials via your material map browser. When we look at the materials, um, like I already said, uh, we mainly use the mental way uh, materials. We hardly, we always use the mental uh, materials. There are very, very few exceptions when I use standard materials. Uh, and uh, you have the arc and design materials, which are really complex. There are a lot of settings. Uh, it's endless and you have to be an expert to use this. What I always use, I use the Autodesk materials and the advantage is that you can also use to uh, use it in other products like AutoCAD or, or, or Revit actually. And they are so much easier uh, in terms of uh, how to use. Uh, if I go into wall paint, you can only see that there are very few settings you have to uh, uh, adjust. And uh, there are also the Autodesk material library, which is actually exactly the same like this Autodesk materials. The only difference is that they're already adjusted. So if you, for example, go into ceramic and you go into tiles, then you can see a big amount of materials. Altogether, there are more than 1,000 200 or even more materials and if I just double -clock click on one of these materials you can see that um, that these materials already have um, already have uh, mappings and uh, we can just have a look at this uh, right now here so there are um, here there are already mappings behind this so you can easily use these materials and get uh, really good results and you just have to choose it in a design way and probably do very few adjustments. I will talk about this in another video, but what I actually always do, I always uh, choose an ambient occlusion, I always switch this all on and I always choose a distance of uh, 120 in this term centimeters and use uh, color from other materials. And we just have a look at this uh, in uh, difference in one visualization. So what you can see right now is a visualization without ambient occlusion. Uh, this is what it looks like uh, here. And uh, the next uh, visualization I will show you is uh, a rendering with an with ambient occlusion of four centimeters. And uh, this is a visualization with a uh, ambient occlusion of uh, 120 centimeters. Uh, I like uh, this a lot. I think this looks uh, much better than uh, the default four centimeters. And uh, this is uh, what I do with every material. Uh, uh, I work in 3D Studio uh, set the ambient occlusion. So it's much more realistic because you have these little shadows in the corners which uh, make it uh, much more three dimensional. In my material map browser, I can also open uh, material libraries. If I go into this little uh, triangle and go into open materials, I just move to my folder of 3D Studio Max. Okay, I just went into 3D Studio Max and there's something like material libraries. And uh, here you can just see that there are already different kind of 
libraries and you can download a lot of libraries uh, from the internet or from different kind of uh, applies or also build your own uh, libraries. If I just double click on this you can see that there's a material library called Mentalway Arc Design Templates uh, that are already things uh, adjusted like uh, leather, like glossy plastics, uh, frosted uh, glass, copper and things like this and uh, what you can also do, you can not only open material, uh, materials for material libraries, you can also just open material libraries from other 3D Studio Max files. I just moved uh, to a folder. Uh, in this folder there are different kind of uh, 3D Studio Max files which I can't see right now. I just have to choose a uh, file of type and just swap from material libraries to 3D Studio Max file and then you can see that I can load these, uh, uh, these files and I just go into open and uh, what you see is that it just opens all the all the uh, materials from these uh, scene. I can just use these scenes uh, now for my new scene, which is really handy. So you just store the uh, store the materials and uh, in your in your files and just uh, use it and import it into your new scene. And so you are really flexible in between swapping materials from one scene to the other. Or you can even say uh, have a new uh, material library and just. Um, uh, just uh, build up your own material libraries and with right mouse click you also can see that you can rename this and uh, also close again the materials and uh, many other things. The last thing we want to look at uh, are the different kind of hierarchies in my material editor and uh, when I just choose one material for example like this Autodesk hardwood uh, this uh, then you can see that we have a lot of uh, settings on my uh, material uh, material level but you can also just go from this hierarchy to my mapping uh, level if I just click on this image uh, you can see that these buttons are now uh, um, uh, not uh, not switched off anymore. You can uh, just uh, go up again, go to parents. So my main level, my material level is the parent level and if I go down then I'm on my child level and on this child level I can uh, always uh, change the settings of my mappings or textures. I can exchange them for example here uh, uh, to uh, completely different kind of uh, materials and I'll just do this right now. Okay, there was uh, one mistake. I don't want to have it as a sequence. I just want to load it like uh, load it like this. And uh, here we go. And if I want to leave this level again, I want to go to the level of the parent again. I just go up, and on this side, I can just go to the siblings because possibly it's like this that uh, there is an instance or a copy on my uh, mapping or texture level and we have a look at this I go up to the parent and we can see that there is a mapping and there's probably another channel in all my material where this mapping is also used so you can navigate on my mapping level this is more like the child level and obviously on my material level and once you understand the co uh, this concept it's really easy to, uh, to deal with the materials. In another video we will look at how to apply materials to objects with uh, UV um, modifier and uh, in a third video we will have a look at the materials uh, in a more detailed way. Thanks for watching.